I want to thank God even as I stand here today. Um, everything that has happened in here before us has summarized my sermon. And I just want to say that it is good to dwell in the presence of God because God will speak until you cannot doubt that it is God speaking to us. And I want to thank God more so for Fiona and the mother. In fact, they just summarized my sermon of today. And even when Brother Tsuma came on the pulpit, he started talking about it. So I was just wondering, now what will I say? Now that everyone is talking about my sermon, they may say my points, and now I look the one not original, but I copied what people have been saying here on the pulpit. So I want to thank God uh, for this day and the sermon that God put in my heart when I saw that I was the one ministering today. I, I have given it the topic speaking in, in his presence, speaking in his presence. And my, my, my book that I'm reading from is Daniel. Daniel chapter 2, verse 1 to 23. Daniel chapter 2, verse 1 to 23. Um, I'm going to read very fast then uh, verse 45b to 49. The Bible says, In the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had, had dreams. His mind was troubled and he could not sleep. So the king summoned the magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers to tell him what he had dreamt. When they came in, when they came in and stood before the king, he said to them, I have had a dream that troubles me and I want to know what it means. Then the astrologers answered the king in Aramaic. O oh, king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will interpret it. The king replied to the astrologers, This is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me what, what my dream was and interpret it, I will have you cut into pieces and your houses turned into piles of rubble. But if you tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. So tell me the dream and interpret it for me. Once more they replied, let the king tell his servants the dream and he will interpret it. Then the king answered, I'm certain, I'm certain that you are trying to gain time because you realize that this is what I have firmly uh, because you realize that this is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me the dream, there is just one penalty for you. You have conspired to tell me misleading and wicked things, hoping the situation will change. So then tell me the dream, and I will know that you can interpret it for me. The astrologers answered the king, what the king asks, no king, however great and mighty, has ever asked such a thing of, of any magician or enchanter or astrologer or, astro or astrologer. What the king asks is too difficult. No one can reveal it to the king except the gods, and they do not live among men. This made the king so hungry and furious that he ordered the execution of all the wise men of Babylon. So the decree was issued to put the wise men to death and men were sent to look for Daniel and his friends to, to put them to death. When Ariok, the commander of the king's guard, had gone out to put to death the wise men of Babylon, Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and tact. He asked the king's officer, 
Why did the king issue such a harsh degree? Ariok then explained, explained the matter to Daniel. At this, at, this, da, at this, Daniel went in to the king and asked for time so that he might interpret the dream for him. Then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends, Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. He urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning the mystery so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven and said, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and disposes them. He's, uh, he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwell with him. I thank and praise you, O God, my Father. God of my fathers, you have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we ask for. You have made known to us the dream of the king. Then verse 45b to 14. The great God has shown the king what will take place in the future. The dream is true and the interpretation is trustworthy. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor and ordered that an offering and incense uh, be presented to him. The king said to Daniel, surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries. For you were able to reveal this mystery. Then the king placed Daniel in a high position and lavished many gifts on him. He made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and placed him in charge of all its wise men. Moreover, at Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego administrators over the province of Babylon, while Daniel himself remained at the royal court. May God bless his word. Amen. 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 This, is, this is a story that we, we are familiar with. I know we have been reading it through and through, but I want to pray that God will help us to reread this story today and that we will allow this story to change our lives from today henceforth. In this story, we see a contrast between the true God, Yahweh, the God of Israel, and the other gods. We have four main actors. Number one actors are Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who represents the children of Israel who were in captivity in Babylon. They can also represent believers and followers of Jesus Christ today. Number two actor, we have other wise men, other wise men. And these other wise men, the, 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 the magicians, the astrologers, the enchanters, the witches, they are representing the false gods of this world. Number three actor is King Nebuchadnezzar. This was a powerful king a ruler in Babylon. He is representing the rulers of this world who do not subscribe to the presence of God or who do not know the true God. And he can also represent the devil. Number four, the true, we have uh, uh, the fourth character is the true God, Yahweh. Though invisible in this scene, but the main actor in the scene. Praise the Lord. The king had a dream, he had dreams. That is what the Bible says. The Bible says King Nebuchadnezzar, while he was sleeping, 
he had dreams, not one dream. That is what the Bible records. He had dreams, and these dreams troubled him. He could not sleep. And what is recorded in the Bible is that um, in Babylon, this, we used to have wise men, uh, wise men who were the magicians, the astrologers, the enchanters, the witches, and they were like employees, part of the, uh, the, 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 part of the king's uh, advisors. They could advise him, they could interpret dreams for him, and they could tell him many things. So when he had this dream, he went to them and told them that I have had dreams and I'm so troubled and I want you to tell me what I dreamt and you interpret it for me. That was a very tall order, isn't it? Even me, just the other day, I, I was sleeping and I had a dream that uh, I was worshiping in the presence of the Lord the whole night. It was a very, very nice worship. And uh, uh, God had given me a tune of a common song. So inside my dream, I was telling myself, um, I was remembering what my friend who is a singer, a singer told me. She told me that when you have a tune in the night, you need to wake up and record it so that you don't forget. In the morning, you can re-sing it again. So, um, uh, I was just thinking like that, but I never woke up. I, I just thought, ah, it is a dream that I'll just remember when I wake up. So I forgot. So in the morning, I was telling my husband, hey, I have had a wonderful dream. Uh, God has given me a very nice tune um, of a song that is very powerful, but I have forgotten the tune. So I think this is what happened to, you can imagine if I told my husband, tell me the tune uh, of what I dreamt and the song. That is a tall order to ask in this act. Because no one actually can be able to tell you what you dreamt apart from you, yourself, and God. So these people were left helpless. The powerful people in the community, the magicians, the astrologers, the enchanters. You remember the astrologers? They, they are the wise men who are following the star. These were wise people. They had a lot of wisdom. And now they are not able to interpret the dream of the king. They were so powerless. They were helpless. And when the king repeated to them the third that time and told them, tell me what I dreamt and interpret it for me. Then they said, oh king, there is no other, no other king on, it, on this earth, whether mighty or big, who has ever asked a such question or rendered a such question request. Maybe the only people who can be able to, to do what you are saying, they are the gods. And these gods are not living among us. You can imagine the de desperation. Their gods were not living among them. Their gods were very far away. And they had no one to help them tell the king what he had dreamed. And the king told them, if you are not going to tell me this dream, I'm going to execute you. All of you, you are going to die. I'll remain without a wise man in this nation. And you, rem you remember by then, if you read chapter 1, Daniel had been employed now in the king's palace as a wise man. And the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were living with him. They were also wise men. 
So when God gave an order that these people be destroyed, be killed, the, the, this man, the, 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 this God of the king, now uh, started looking for these men so that he may, they may be executed. And Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were sought to. So when this Ariok reached Daniel, and he, will, he told him what the king had said, Daniel asked him, how can the king issue a such harsh degree? So this prompted Daniel to speak out. Daniel said, give me time and I am going to interpret. I'm going to tell you what you dreamt and to interpret it for you. So Daniel, without fear, marched to the king and asked the king to give him time so that he can interpret. He can reveal the dream and interpret it. It can take a courageous person. Because Daniel didn't know the dream also. But the advantage he was having, he was depending on the wisdom of the Most High God. The difference between Daniel and the other wise men is that the other wise men, their gods were staying far away from them. Maybe they needed to be carried into the scene. But for Daniel, his God was present there and then. Praise the Lord. So when Daniel asked the king to give him time, he found favor in the eyes of the king. And the king gave him time. When Daniel was given time, guess what happened? He has spoken and he has received favor. He has been given time with the king. He goes where? To his accountability group. And who were in the accountability group? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This was a very powerful and a very serious accountability group. So Daniel explained to them, this is what has happened, and this is what the king has said. We are soon going to be killed, together with all other wise men in Babylon. Then Daniel requested, uh, requested Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to plead for mercy and to call upon the Lord so that God can reveal to them what the king had dreamed and also um, uh, give them the interpretation. And they did this overnight. That was Akesha. Praise the Lord. Sarah group, do you normally have Akesha? Sarah group, where are you from? Today you are rising to the next level. Praise the Lord. You will be having Keshas and just calling upon the Lord to reveal to you great things. I want to thank God because Fiona ran to her accountability group. So these people had a Kesha and for sure God manifested himself by revealing the dream and giving Daniel the interpretation. And from there, Daniel knew God in a different way. You, you know he was already a wise man, but he didn't have the wis wisdom that time to uh, reveal to the king what he had dreamed. So he comes here and says, praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and disposes them. He gives wisdom to the wise. He was already wise, but he needed a different wisdom. Then he says, and knowledge to the discerning. Daniel already had the gift of discernment, and God has now added to his knowledge. We can never outgrow 
God. Wisdom keeps coming and coming. Knowledge keeps coming and coming. This is what happened to uh, these four young uh, Hebrew men while they were in captivity. And because of Daniel's speaking, all these wise men were saved. They were not killed. They were not killed. You remember that decree had been given. The decree that the king had, gi been, had given was that all the wise men, including Daniel, Shadrach, and Abednego, were going to die. You remember what was happening in um, the time of Esther, when all the Jews were going to be killed. And Mordecai was telling Esther, please go and speak to the king. And Esther was taking time. And Mordecai told him, don't think that your quietness, don't think that as you continue keeping quiet, you will be safe. You are going to like, you are likewise going to be destroyed. So that is what happened. And because Daniel went and revealed the dream to the king and gave the interpretation, he was elevated. He was promoted. And out of his promotion, he also told the king, I want you also to promote Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So God will always work in our accountability group. When one is promoted, all are promoted. That is why we need to seek to dwell in our accountability group where the presence of God will find us. Praise the Lord. So after that um, promotion, sorry, After that, the Bible says, the king fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor, gifts, gifted him and promoted him to be the ruler over the entire province of Babylon and placed him in charge of all the wise men. That was the promotion. What I wanted to read is this. Um, Finally, the king confessed to Daniel and said, Your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and the revealer of mysteries. This is an unbeliever, a pagan king, now confessing that the God of Daniel is the God of God's, and he is the Lord of kings. If Daniel would have kept quiet, they would have died with that great testimony. But because he chose to speak out and told the king, give me time, I pray fast. All this came about until King Nebuchadnezzar came to know that for sure, there is a God of gods. Because these other gods were nowhere. But there is this God who is in heaven and who reveals mysteries. That was evangelism of the highest order. By, the, by an accountability group. Not consisting of 20 people. Only four. Praise the Lord. And these people knew each other. The four knew each other. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, they knew each other. They were there in the king's palace. And at some point, uh, they were given the king's food. And they decided we can never defile ourselves with the king's food. And all of them decided None of them went astray and said, ah, ichakula nitam sana, wacha nionje hizi nyama kidogo, alafu nikunywe 
wine kidogo. No, they said we are not going to defile ourselves. Because we have a God in heaven whom we are accountable to. They decided never to defile themselves and they kept their stand. And when this man came to them and was asking, okay, they requested this man when he was uh, convincing them that, oh, just eat this food. The king will um, wonder why are you not eating your portion? They told him, just test us. They also spoke at that point. Test us for 10 days. And for sure they were tested. When this man came to look at them, he thought he will find them emaciated and dying. But the Bible says they were 10 times healthier than other people in the palace. And yet they were surviving on vegetables. And I want to believe even us today. Many of us have survived on water, on vegetables. And I know if someone comes here, they may not notice the difference between us and the people who have not been fasting. Even someone was asking me, and pastor, you are, you are getting fat every day. I said, I'm getting fat and we are fasting. Hmm? I thought I'm getting thin. Hmm? But the, the eyes of that person was seeing I'm getting fat. So they were 10 times healthier than all other young people in the palace. It is good for us to make a promise to God in the year 2023 that we will not defile ourselves. Even if we don't give bribes, even if we don't steal, we will not die. We are not going to look miserable we will be as anointed as little babies. Praise the Lord. That is the Christianity we are preaching today. Dwelling in the presence of God and abiding in the vine. Um, we have lessons we are learning from uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel. One, know you are God or find your identity in the true God. Find your identity in the true God. If we ever desire the presence of God to dwell with us in our families, in our individual lives, in this church, know your God or find your identity in God. Without identity in God, you are dwelling alone. You are not abiding in the vine. Number two, commit your life totally to God. Cling on God always. Come rain, come sunshine. Cling on him. Then abide in him and dwell in his presence always. Once we abide in him, we will dwell in his presence always. Yesterday we were in prayers and our senior pastor was telling us, why do we pray for the presence of God to come down? Does it mean that we have been outside the presence of God? And he was saying that, no, we, we are in the presence of God. But he was also challenging us and telling us that there are people who are normally outside the presence of God. Because they are not abiding in the vine. Once you are not abiding in the vine, even if you had confessed Jesus as your personal savior, you are abiding outside the presence of God. You know, and what, the senior, what our senior pastor was talking to us is like a socket that is loose. Maybe you are using it to charge your phone or you want to put on a light. The light will keep on blinking, blinking. Eh? And he was telling us that we need to be serious in the year 2023. You are either in Christ or outside Christ. Imambo ya blink, blink. Blink, blink. 
then the phone will finish the whole day without getting full. So we need to make a choice as early as this in the year that we are not going to be blinking Christians or submarine Christians, whereby on Sunday we come and we are busy serving the Lord. But when it comes to Sunday evening, we begin to sink deep into the sea and do all the things we can do, then began, begin again emerging out on Saturday only to come and stand before people that we are serving. We will not be dwelling in the presence of God. Number three, you are the mouthpiece of God and God wants to use you to speak out and not to remain silent. In 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, the Bible says, uh, Paul tells us that we are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We em implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. We are Christ's ambassadors, though in the world we are not of this world. And God is using our mouth. We are the voice of God. We are the ones to speak out the voice of God. If we remain silent, people are going to die. Not only, don't think, don't think when you remain silent, you will be safe. Even you, you are going to perish. When we don't speak, our siblings, our children, our parents, our young people, our, our what? All people who are our workmates are going to die in sin. In the presence of God, we must speak out. And we are speaking out the voice of God. Once we are in the presence of God, when people stood here and they are in, in the presence of God, I was hearing the voice of God speaking. We must rise up and speak in the presence of God. God wants to use our mouth. Touch at your mouth and just touch your mouth. God wants to use your mouth. You are the mouthpiece of God. You are Christ's ambassador here on earth. Just the way Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego represented God in a foreign land. That was not their land. And they never uh, left their God. They never backslid. But they hung on and they spoke in the presence of God. God and many people's lives were saved. When we stand out for God, he rewards us. There is a reward in heaven. There are crowns of we have a crown that the Bible says we will be crowned when it tutavalishwa taji. Niki maliza kazi nitavalishwa taji niki maliza kazi nitavalishwa taji So just the way Daniel was rewarded and Shadrach Meshach and Abednego there is a reward in heaven These rewards are not only remaining in heaven they are coming to us even here on earth There is a reward when we remain in God's presence Then number five, be in the right accountability group where the presence of God dwells. Grow small to grow big. I remember our drama ministry ministering to us last year. I have not forgotten. When they were talking about the importance of the small groups, they were telling us, um, when you are in an accountability group, you will grow there. It is small. You go there, you grow small, then you grow big. 
And that is what happened for Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In their small group, they grew in their small group, then they grew big. If you read the book of Daniel, you will realize that the pagan kings were able to know God through Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were announcing that the whole world should know that the true God is the God of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were saying, if you anybody say anything against the God of Daniel, will be killed. They grew small and they grew big in the whole world. I want to pray one thing, that God may help us in our accountability groups. I'm so impressed about Sarah group, that one of them was sick, was having a challenge, and she ran to her group. Are you able to run to your accountability group members? Are you able to be accountable to them? Just reflect yourself. Do an introspect in your accountability group. Look at the people who are there. Do you know them? If you are in a group where you don't know people, that is not an accountability group. Yeah? Those are chamas. We want to come out of chamas in the year 2023. And be in groups where we are accountable to one another, in groups where the presence of God will dwell, in groups where we are going to speak on behalf of God. May God help us. May God help us in our accountability groups. I'm waiting for us to, I'm waiting to hear that our accountability group, we are, we are just carrying ourselves, even without the knowledge of anybody, and we have gone on the mountain to pray and fast. That is the kind of accountability group Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in. A group that cashes there, and when they come in the house of the Lord, nobody knows, but the presence, they are full in the presence of God. And if all of us, we are going to rise up in such groups, I tell you, come December this year, many lame people will have walked in this sanctuary. Many deaf will have their ears opened. The blind will see. People with the cancer, cancer will not torment people. You can imagine how God is looking at us in heaven. What is our motto? Our motto? Our motto is Christ is the answer. Just ask yourself in a still small voice, if somebody comes to me and asks me uh, to be the answer to their problems, will I give them the answer? Christ is the answer. We are supposed to be the solution to the world, not only here in town. It is so painful, it is so embarrassing when people go leave the church and go outside there to look for mediums, to look for diviners, to look for magicians, to look for enchanters, to look for astrologers. And yet we say Christ is the answer. May God help us in the year 2022 that we are going to be the answer to the world that is uh, sinking and sinking in sin and in death. If we are not going to rise up and stand in the presence of God and be the mouthpiece of God, many people are going to die. Our children are dying. Our siblings are dying. Our parents are dying. Our young people, look at all the primary schools around. Look at all the high schools around. How many of us have just gone there to present, to speak the gospel of Jesus Christ? Just to speak to these young people so that they may know this God and evade the death sentence the enemy has put on them. How many? How many of us go to prisons? 
I know we have a majority of us, we go to prisons, but the, the whole church, we need to rise up and speak. It is one thing to be in the presence of God and another thing to rise up and speak in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. May God help us in the year 2023 that we are not going to maintain the status quo. We are going to do something different from what we have been doing always. It shocks me and pains me when prayer meetings here carries only five people or six people. Then we come and say we are abiding in the vine surely. Then when it comes to Sunday, all these chairs are full. We are doing the opposite. We are growing big in the crowd and growing small in our accountability groups. But we need to grow small and so that we can grow big in this sanctuary, so that the presence of God can be experienced here. When people come here, they are, they, 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 their needs are met. You can imagine how many people are like Mom Fiona. They are on their own. How many people are like Fiona? They are sisters, they are parents, they are siblings. There is a de death sentence that has been passed by the enemy. You, you are suffering from cancer. You will never live again. And they are with us. Yesterday, we were talking about the young people along this road from Langas. If you come from Langas to Pioneer, there are bars there. And those places are packed with cars, full to the brim. Who do you think is there? Our young people, our young people are there. People are dying. If we will not do things differently to salvage the lives of people, don't think even you, you are safe. You are not safe. May God help us to rise up to the occasion and uh, reflect the presence of God in our small groups and even in the, this entire congregation. May God help us so that we will go out and speak on behalf of God so that many people will know Jesus Christ and be born again and evade the death sentence that is, has been put on them by Satan. In conclusion, I want us to pray briefly because of time we will pray. I want us to pray that our accountability groups will grow to be a true reflection of God's presence here on earth. Then number two, pray that God will use your mouth to speak his voice to this dying world in the year 2023. Number three, pray for this church that as we grow small, we are going to grow big in the presence of God. Number four, pray for the power of God to be evident through signs and wonders in our ministry in the year 2023. Let us stand up for a word of prayer. Just pray. Pray for three minutes that the Spirit of God is leading you out of this message, uh, just calling upon the Lord in this year 2023. What, what are we expecting with a such loaded theme? What are we expecting? And what is God expecting from us? What is God expecting us to begin doing? What are the things that we need to leave out so that we may continue to grow in the presence of God and be a reflection of the presence of God, even in this Washingishu County, that people will come to look for answers from us. They will not go out there to magicians. People will not go out there to look for enchanters. They will not go out there to look for diviners. But they will come in the presence of God, where there is fullness of joy. Their needs will be met. Talk to yourself as an individual. What are you doing differently? Let us talk to ourselves, then pray for the church. Are we going to remain doing same things that we have been doing even in the year 2022? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, Riva Kanta la Raba Siki, Riva Shanda la Raba Zang. Daddy, we need you. We need you, Lord God Almighty. We need you, Jehovah King. We need you as individuals. We need you as a church, oh Lord God Almighty. We need you as a leadership, oh Jehovah King. Oh, mighty Redeemer, Riva Kanta la Raba Zang. Give us courage, oh Jehovah, even to speak in your presence. Give us courage, everlasting God, even to go out. Almighty God, and speak your voice, your voice to the dying world. My master and my king, River Kantalaraba Zai. Today, Jehovah King, may you help us. Oh, mighty king of all glory, raise accountability groups, Almighty God, within us that are going to reflect the presence of God. Oh, mighty redeemer, River Kantalaraba Zai. Daddy, may you come through for us, even as we continue to confess this theme. The Lord, we, it is going to be practical in our lives. It is going to be practical in the church, O oh Jehovah God. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us to speak out, O oh Jehovah King. Help us to speak out, O oh Jehovah Lord. Help us, almighty King of all glory. Daddy, we need you. We need you. Help us to come out of our comfort zone, so Jehovah God, and go out there, mighty King of all glory. Speak out your voice, so Jehovah God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Riva Kantala Rabazai. Oh, Shamba Babala Sekelereba. Mighty King of all glory. May you raise, oh Jehovah, raise the Daniels of this day. Raise Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego of this day, even in our midst today, Jehovah God, who will speak out the voice of God, O Riva Kantala Rabasai, who will say not to sin, O Jehovah, who will say not to sin, everlasting God, Rimba Telere Masanta, Rimba Telere Masanto Lorobasai, Rimba Sekelere Mayando Lorobasai, Ria Kantelere Basoko Lorobasai. Hallelujah. Daddy, we need you. We need you, King of Kings. We need you, Lord of Lords. Oh, hallelujah.